I'll take you through creating a new document in Affinity Designer. When you open the app, you can navigate to the New tab to create a new document. You can also access the dialog through the File menu and select New. At the top of the dialog, we have the search box. This allows you to search for specific presets. Or you can open the drop down list of categories below. You can also scroll down the list to browse the various categories. Print is used for domestic and desktop printing, and all presets in this category have an RGB colour format. This is because domestic printers do their own RGB to CMYK conversions. For professional printing, though, you'll want to use the Press Ready presets, as these are set up with a CMYK colour format, which is usually preferred by professional printers. Photo presets allow you to work in specific photo print sizes, like 6x4 inches and 7x5 inches. The web category allows you to work at specific screen resolutions or popular social media dimensions. Further down, there are some presets suited to devices, such as the 11-inch and the 12.9-inch iPad screens, as well as some common architectural sizes. If you use certain presets regularly, you can shortlist them to access quickly using the heart icon next to each one. For example, I regularly use the domestic A4 page, the A5 and A6 sizes from the Press Ready category, the social media square and the iPad 12.9 inch. Now I can click the heart at the top to access my favourite presets. Along from the favourites heart icon, we can set the new document's orientation to portrait or landscape and the preview to the right will update accordingly. Each category header has a menu to rename or delete the category and at the bottom of the preset window, you can create a new category of your own. For this example, I'll call this category Product Design. Now I can set up a new preset for my workflow. I'll go to the Layout tab first and change the width to 210mm and the height to 100mm. I'll make sure the DPI is set to 300. DPI, or dots per inch, sets the resolution of your document. A DPI value of 300 is recommended for professional printing. I'll also create it as an artboard. Next, I'll look on the colour tab and I'll make sure it's in a CMYK colour format. There is also the option to make the background transparent. By default, the background is a pure white fill, but if you want to work on something like a logo design, you'll likely want to enable transparent background. On the Margins tab, I can include or disable the margins. I'd like all the margins to be the same value, so I'll enable link margins here and input a small 5mm margin into one of the input fields. I'll press Enter to update the other fields. I'll also need a small bleed. As well as typing into the input field, I can also hover my cursor over one of the fields and scroll up or down on the mouse wheel. Finally, in the Scale tab, I could set up a drawing scale and choose from a list of ratios and readout units, but I won't need this for my preset, so I'll just disable the drawing scale. Now I can click here to save my preset. I'll name this preset Bottle Label and then open the Category list and select my new Product Design category. I can also select an appropriate icon. In the middle of the dialog, you've probably noticed a preview of your document. This is responsive to the settings that you choose, showing the document orientation and the width, height, bleed and margins proportionally. The red line shows the bleed, the blue line represents the margin and the dashed green line indicates that the document will be created as an artboard. To the far right, I have a document summary confirming the key settings for this document. If I needed to amend the size of the document, I can return to the Layout tab and make any changes that I need to. Then I can go to the area above the preview and click to update the preset, or alternatively, I can save the amended version as a separate preset using Save As. This will keep the original preset and instead create a new preset with the updated settings. When I'm happy, I can click Create to start working on this document.
If for any reason I need to change the settings of the document after it has been created, I can go to File and open the document setup. Here I can amend any settings from the original New Document dialog as well as some additional settings. For example, from here I can change the margin and bleed colours. If I change the size or dimensions of the document, I can set how I'd like any objects that I've already placed there to be handled. I can choose to have them rescaled proportionally to the new document size or anchor them to the page to keep them the same size. If they are rescaled, I can choose a resample method here. If you have set up a margin and you can't see the margin lines, go to View and select Show Margins. So that was a look at the new document settings and creating presets. Thanks for watching.